Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Kitten Ayin Gimel. We are holding 14 lines from the top of the Yom. Tanu Rabbonon, we have learned in a brace as follows. Zagitech mihayoyim im mati mechilize. One gives a get to his wife. It should be activated starting today on condition. Im mati mechilize. If I pass on due to this illness that I am currently experiencing. And what happened? He passed away, but not due to illness. So the building collapsed on him. Or he was bitten by a snake. And that was the cause of his death. get. It doesn't constitute a get. Why? Says Rashi. Because, you know, this is not a common uh, you know, episode. He wasn't thinking along these lines. And when he said, the get should happen if I pass away from this illness, and that's what he meant. Misa al yidei says Rashi. But here, the Misa came about through other means, other causes. But, says the Brysa, Here's your get, starting today, if I do not um, get up, I do not recover, I do not get over this illness. And the same thing happened. An accident happened. What happens now? The get is valid. Now, what's the difference? If he wasn't thinking along these lines, if this is not what he meant, what's the difference between the first and the second case? Right? If an oinus, an accident which is uncommon, such as nafal abayis or hikish nachash, is included in his, uh, you know, presentation, included in what he had in mind. Then, then in the first set of cases, right, the first part of the b'risa, it should also be a get. The fact is, he said, if I pass on, while I'm still uh, under the, uh, uh, you know, experiencing this illness, and that's what happened. He was ill and he passed away. True, there was another reason for his passing. But it was mitoich oisei choyli, says Rashi. Right, so he should... Uh, the get should be chal. No, so you'll say that oinus uh, that's not common, an accident that's not shchiach, is not included. So then, in the seifa, in the second part of the brisa as well, what's the difference? And in fact, the gemara does conclude as such: there is no difference. Sholchu mitam. In fact, they responded mitam from Eretz Yisrael. In response to a question, there was a story that happened. A fellow gave a get to his wife using these uh, this expression, right? It's a get starting from today. If I don't get up from this illness, and he was struck down by something very uncommon, they sent the question to Eretz Yisrael, and they responded, "It's not a get." Achlayari, if he was devoured by a lion, ain lanu. We don't have a get. It's an oinus. Deloy Shekhiach, which means an accident which is uncommon, and we say Loy Asik Adaite, that's not what he had in mind when he issued the get. I think we'll bring a couple of more stories of this kind, all based on this underlying principle that, you know, we only take into account realistic scenarios, but something which is totally you know, not shchiach. That's out of bounds and not included in the in the arrangement. Hahugavra. We have a story about a fellow, the Zavin Ar Lachavri. He sold land to his friend. Kabul Alei Kol Einza the Misyalad. I'm lending. I'm selling you the karka. I'm accepting all responsibilities for anything that might happen, even Einus. 
even something which is beyond my control. I'll protect you, I'll uh, you know, compensate you for anything. And what happened? Something so, so uncommon that even he didn't have it in mind. Lesoif, ultimately what happened? So the, uh, you know, the city's planning uh, committee decided to reroute the river, lo and behold, right over this fellow's field. There goes the field. So this fellow wanted to be compensated for his uh, loss from the uh, owner, who was Makabal Achrayis, Asal Kameh Ravina. So in fact, he came to Ravina, and he, uh, he obligated him. Amr Lehi tells the uh, seller, Zil, go Shafi Lehi. Go, um, Shafi means to, to, to uh, settle it, sort of, to, uh, it means to be quiet, it means to, you know, settle it, take care of it, meaning, Compensate him for his loss. Look, you remember, you were uh, any sort of oinus. Well, this is totally different. This is out of bounds. This is. Of course, I'm willing to accept upon myself, you know, for standard, uh, you know, losses, but not something which is totally, totally, uh, you know, unfathomed. Such as the rerouting of a river. Igalgal Musa. It turns out that this uh, this Shiloh, this question, made its way all the way to Rav to Rav. Umatal came to Rav, and he concurred. Amr lahu. He told him, "Unsed leishchiachu, it's oynes leishchiach." And even when you are mekabel achrayis, not to this extent. Eisve Ravina, the Rav. So Ravina was the one who held him responsible. And now Rava disagrees. Ravina asked Rava Akasha from which b'risa? The b'risa that we learned before? That's how it gets into our Gemara. Remember the story? This was case two of that b'risa. Here's your get if I don't get up from the sickness. He was struck down by a snake or a, a building. Here is a get. It works. How common is that? Is that shriach? Of course not. And we say, uh, he accounted for it as well. It's included in his condition. Amalei, Rav, Rav responded. You're posing the question from the second part of the Brisa. What about the first part of the Brisa, which indicates otherwise? Right? We had Tanu Rabbanon, right? And the house collapsed. Snake attacked. Not a get. So that proves a... Uh, that provides a support... It proves my point. They responded to Rava, who countered based on the first part, first part of the Brisa. Okay, so you see there's a contradiction, apparently a contradiction between both parts of the Brisa. They're both similar cases. An unlikely Aynas. Here we say it works, here we say it doesn't. Just because you have a Akasha from one part of the Raisa to the other. So that's why you're not allowing uh, you know, Ravina to ask you from the second part of the Raisa, which indicates that we accept an Oynes, even though it's not Shriach. Amalei Sarovar says, yeah, exactly, that's my point. In, correct. Given the Kashi, Rishul Seifa. You know, when you have a, a blatant contradiction between the Raisa, a Seifa, on the second part of the Raisa, then apparently there's something amiss. Well, Itmar Bebei Midrasha, this Raisa apparently was not, you know, studied and analyzed in the base medrash amongst the Chachamim and in that case it's, it's accuracy is put into question it must be just a, uh, you know inaccurate b'risa and therefore we cannot prove anything, you can't either prove from the b'risa to support your view and zil basa so now all we have left is common sense what does the svaras say? well I think that an oinus which is uncommon and unlikely and unanticipated is not accounted for. We have another story. They purchased a large load of uh, sesame. Where were they? On the riverbank of the Nahar Malka. Okay. Agur Malchi. Now they hired some sailors, Lavarinu, to uh, transport their uh, purchase over the river. 
these were experienced captains and they said you know uh, we're fully responsible for the uh, cargo anything that happens even on illness even an accident we're fully responsible but this they didn't anticipate the soif is stacker normalka suddenly there's a dam okay so the authorities dammed up the river there goes the uh, river traffic you can't pass through Amr Lahu, so the um, Amiroim who purchased uh, this cargo, Rav Papa, right, and Rav Huna, told these um, these transporters, these uh, delivery men, Aguru Khamri, okay, no uh, ship, so go hire some, uh, rent some donkeys to transport our uh, cargo uh, overland. Afke Inu Nialon, you know, um, Transfer the cargo from the ships over to the uh, donkeys and uh, let's go. The kabiltu alaychu. Remember, you uh, committed yourself regarding kol einsa the misyald any einsa that might happen, including this one. You're responsible. Also, commit rava. So once again, they come to rava. Right, rava lishitasay. He uh, was not impressed with their opinion. Amr who he tells them the Amaroim, kaki chivri your. White ducks, because of their uh, older age, their white, you know, white-haired people. That's how he was addressing them. Mishal chiglimi, you're uh, stripping the clothing, the inchi of people, meaning you're taking advantage of people. You're uh, you're uh, pressuring them into paying you, into uh, compensating you. They're not responsible for this type of unlikely scenario. And therefore, they're a pot. So, bottom line, even when you are makabel einus, well, it's only within you know the realm of Reasonability, but something which is totally out of bounds, unlikely and unanticipated, is not included. We had the case of the get, the case of the land purchase, which was overrun by the river, and the case of the sesames, where the river was overrun by the authorities who dammed it up. Continues the Mishnah. So this is sort of a continuation of the previous Mishnah. He gives her a get, mehayoyim imati. Right? It's starting today, if I pass away later. So, it's conditional and retroactively implemented. Starting from today. But, says the Mishnah, be careful. She should not go into um, seclusion with them. There should be no yichud with this um, husband-slash-divorcer who already gave her that get, only in presence of Eden in order to ensure that there's no yichud taking place. And Rashi says, there are two concerns. First of all, we don't want him to interact as married, which is a form of marriage, a form of kedushin, because then it cancels the whole uh, get. Or he says, uh, even if she would be an unmarried woman, because technically she already receives her get, but you're not allowed to do yichud with a penuya. So in any case, you need uh, people present. You can even have a slave, a maidservant. They can provide that service, that deterrence between the couple. Except for her personal maidservant, which doesn't provide that deterrent. Because she's very familiar with her and wouldn't hesitate to interact with her husband as married. And her presence does not serve to deter. Continues the Mishnah. Now we're shifting. This is based on the Gemara later. Now we're shifting to a slightly different case. He gave her a get. And tells her, look, this get will be implemented a moment before my death. He wants to, uh, you know, protect her from Yibum, whatever the reason is. That's how he put it. Now, that point, that moment before death, of course, is unknown. So what happens to her? Mahi Ba'isan Hayamim, what is her status between now and his eventual passing away? Rabbi the Aymerke Eish Es Ish. We treat her like a married woman, pertaining to all her matters. Meaning, if somebody else interacts with her as married, is punishment, just like an Asha Sish. Why? Because the get is only chal, is only implemented a moment before his death. Well, now he's alive and well. She's a full Asha Sish. Rabbi Yisri, I no. Migoresh is any Migoresh is always a perpetual suffolk. Married, unmarried. Because at every given moment he could pass away, so you'll never know when that moment is, and therefore she has the status of a semi married woman, a suffolk. And she says if one interacts with her as married, a stranger, he has to bring an ashram tali. 
Okay, let's go back to the first part of the Mishnah. He gave her a get, mehayoyim, imati, right? So then there should be no yichud between them, lest you disrupt the get, because there might be interaction as married, bia creates a kedushin, etc. Turn her up on Let's say she was observed together with him in a dark area. She slept with him beneath the bed. There's no reason to be concerned that they're interacted as married. It doesn't create a disruption on the get. But the chayshishin mishem zenus, the in chayshishin mishem kedush. We are chayshish that perhaps there was some, you know, improper interaction zenus, but there's no concern of real kedush. We'll explain this in a minute. Rabbi Yisi, Rabbi Doima, yeah, av chayshishin mishem kedush. There was even a concern that he was mekadesher. Now, my kama, what's exact? What exactly is going on here? We say, you know, ain chayshishin. Then we say we are chayshish, we're not chayshish. What's going on? Amar Rav Nachman, Amar Rabbi Ravu. We have to insert another, you know, factor into the brisa. Hachika Amar the brisa means like this: Ruah Shaniv Allah. So, just because you know there was yichud, then we're not chayshish that they went further. But let's say there was more than that. We we know that there was uh, interaction as married. That creates a real chashash, a basis for a, a brand new marriage. Chayshishim Nishim Kedushin. We're concerned that that's considered Kedushin. And therefore, if he really wants to divorce her, he has to issue a new get, because that first get was obliterated through this Kiddush. That's part one of the Brysa. And here comes the part that the Brysa sort of left out. Nosen looks soften. But if one notices that he's handing her a gift, he's giving her some money, So that, that indeed provides an indication of some sort that there was some physical interaction, but not as an official remarriage, Kiddushin. We say it's just, you know, uh, informal interaction. That's why he's giving her this gift. It's just a gift in exchange for that interaction. It's an Esnan. We call it an Esnan's Noina. We don't take it a step further. We don't give it seriousness and formality and treat it as a Kiddushin. So, yeah, if there was actual uh, interaction as married, we see it as Kiddushin. But, if we notice that there was, you know, some money handed over after this interaction, that sort of changes the whole picture. We deem it as iznos. No more than that. Rabbi Yesi, Rabbi Doimer, he disagrees. He's machmer. Afezu, even if following their interaction, it was an exchange of money. We treat it as kedushin, and she requires a new get. Okay, so that's the way Rav Nachman. Omar Rabba Baravo interprets the price. So again, Yichud on its own doesn't create a concern. If we actually know there was interaction as married, we treat it as a Kedushin. What about handing over of money after that interaction? Achlekes, Tanakama says, oh, that uh, changes the whole picture, turns it into snus. otherwise he wouldn't be paying her. Whereas Arisha Bidu says, here as well, perhaps it's a Kedushin. Now, Keman Azla Hoda Omar Rabba Barbachama Omar Biechna. In accordance with which uh, Shita here, Tanakamo, Rabbi Yesi, Baramachlekis, right? So which Shita corresponds with what Rabba told us in the name of Rabbi Yechna regarding a different Mishnah uh, later on in our Masechta, Hazoyrek, which discusses the following case. Okay, so before we proceed, we have to have this clear. The mission there speaks about a person who actually divorced his wife. He was Megarish his sister, but then they stayed together in the same hotel. You know, so Beishamay say, there's no need to issue a new get. Beishil say, oh yes, you need a new get. And Rabbi Barachana quotes Rabbi Yechanan, who explains the Machlekes, Machlekes Kishiruah Shenivala. When do Beishil require a brand new get? That's when they were actually observed interacting as married. Then we have basis for a new condition and a new get is required. But if it was just Yichud, but no more than that, we haven't seen anything more. Divya Koil, all agree, even Beishil agree, there's no 
firm grounds or basis for real concern. There's no need to have a new get. Get Shani, a new get. So that's his interpretation on the Shita Basilo. And the truth is, this matches everything we've said today. Kiman, who Shita does this match up with, meaning in our Brysa, we had a similar discussion. It matches with everybody. Tanakama and Rabbi Yisrael Rehuda, because they both seem to concur 100% that if there, was, if there was only Yichud, we don't treat it as a new condition. Only when we saw them acting together as married, then we say, you know, we treat it as a new marriage and a new get is required. So that's perfectly. Matching up with Rabbi Yechanan's presentation over there. Okay? So simply Yichud is nothing, but interaction as married presents a concern. Maska for Abayi. So Abayi had a, you know, a, a, a kasha of Nachman. Based on the on the um, wording of the price, midik safim katani. You know, you you injected a whole new element in our price. He gave her money. Didn't give her. Who spoke about money? Therefore, says Abaye, I want to shift tracks. I want to present another interpretation to this price. Elor Abaye chikamah. The price means like this: a fellow who issued a get to his wife on condition, right? If they were misyachid, that's not a concern. But ru'ua shenivalo. If we saw more than that, we saw bi'ilo. Chayshishim mishim znos. Ve'ein chayshishim mishim kedushin. We say, look, you know, it doesn't mean kedushin. We say it was just an inappropriate interaction, that's it. We don't give it more credence than that, and there's no need to have a new get. That's a chidush of Tanakam. Even if there was interaction as married, we don't treat it as a new condition. On that we have the shita of Rabbi Yisir. Were you the Aymer? No. Av chayshishim shem kedushin. Yep. If there was interaction as married between them, we say, we treat it as a new condition. And this shita of Rabbi Yisir Yudah matches with Rabbi Yechanan in the other sugi, right? Who says that when they were observed doing this advanced interaction, we treat it as a marriage. But not like Tanakama Bayas doesn't hold that. He holds that even that is not treated as Kiddushin, right? So, Kaman Oz Lahad Amar Bar Rucham Rabbi Yechanan. So, Rabbi Yechanan's interpretation of the other Machlaikas over there, Machlaikas, this Machlaikas between Shami Basila, whether a new get is required, and Basila who require a new get is only Kishrok Shnivala, when we saw Be'ila Avalir Shem Nivala. But if there was no observation of that experience, the Ibrahim all agree, Ain Sricha, I mean, a get, Shani, we don't need a. Repeat the get. Who does that work with? That's Rabbi Sarihudu by us. Keman. Rabbi Sarihudu who agrees, who holds that when we saw something like that, we have to be concerned. But Tanakama obviously is not going with that uh, track because he holds that even if we observed Bi'ilah, we treat it merely as his nos. Maska for Rabbi. Rabbi has a kasha on Abayis Pshat. Okay? Imkain my af. I have one little kasha. According to you, Abayi was speaking that they saw Tanakama says, don't give it uh, credibility. Don't treat it as a condition. Rabbi Yisrael says, Af. It is considered a condition. But what's Af? Also, Tanakama said a kula, right? We don't treat it as a condition. Also, we also treat He should have said the same thing without the word Af. I disagree. He should have said you should have said, What's off? I'm not adding anything. I'm disagreeing. Hello, my Rav says, Rav Al suggest a pshat to the Bryce. Hachikamar. So once again, the Bryce has started by telling us, Yichr alone is not a concern. Interaction as married is a concern of a brand new Kedushin. Now comes Rabbi Yisri. But Rabbi Yudha Imer, Af loya ru'ua shenivalo. So again, sorry, let's just backtrack again. The Bryce starts by saying, 
Yichr alone does not, uh, is not equated to marriage. We don't treat it as a new condition. And even if they saw interaction, physical interaction as married, Tanakhama says, nah, it's merely znus. Now comes Rabbi Yisrael and says, Rabbi Yisrael Yudha, No, I want to take it to the other extreme. Even if they merely saw Yichud, even if they didn't see physical interaction as married, he's taking it to the other extreme. Since they're familiar with each other, Right? Libo Gaspa. And we saw Yichud. We assume it took it to the next level as well. So basically we have, you know, two ext- shitas that are diametrically opposed. Mamash, two ends of the spectrum. Tanakhama says, even physical interaction is not treated as a Kedushin. They were just, you know, informally involved. And Rabbi Yisrael Rida goes the other way. He says they're so close; they know each other. We don't trust them. Even even a mere yichud is treated as though there was a new kedushin here. Yichud equals bia. That's it. And bia equals kedushin. Oh, so now let's just refer back to that um, discussion with Rabbi Yechonon over there. Keman az lahada amar Rabbi Rucham Rabbi Yechonon. So what Rabbi Yechonu tells us the Machlaikis, that the whole discussion there between Shammai Yishilel and Bishilu who require a new get is Kishiru Shanivala. When the Adam saw the couple interacting as married, or again, that was talking about the couple who were already divorced, and then they spent some time together. Bishilu require a new issuance of get because Ruo Shanivala, they were seen together physically. But otherwise, we don't need a new get. Now it's a bit tricky. Now this doesn't fit with anybody over here. Anybody in our Bryce. Because look, they were saying, very simple, simple formula. Yichr alone is not a concern, but interaction as married is. And here we're going, well, according to Tanakama, even interaction as married is merely treated as nus and does not require a new get. That certainly doesn't fit with that interpretation. And Rabbi Shavita goes the other way. He says, even if all they noticed was yichud, that also leads us to con- to generate this concern about interaction as married, which equals marriage, which requires a new get. So basically, it's totally out of line with that interpretation in that sugi, and apparently they have a different approach to that sugi. Now, mahi ba'isa Let's shift over to part two of our Mishnah. He gave her a get, a conditional get. Question, what is her status throughout? Until he passes away. Rabbi Daimer, well, up until then, she's fully married. Ke'eshes ish, luchal devarel. Rabbi Yisri Oymer, begurashes v'enugurashes, what does a suffolk? Now the Gemara is going to point out to us two things. Okay, first of all, Tana, we learned in the Bryce, Ubavat Shiyamas. Of course, this only pertains to a fellow that eventually passed away before his wife. Because otherwise, the condition never took took effect, and the get never implemented itself. So, of course, she was a fully married woman. But now, we have another kash. Ulchimayis havigita. So, so you're telling me that, um, you know, Only when he passes away does it become a get. Right? Until then she's either fully married or suffolk married, and the get is only implemented when she when he actually passes away. Will the Khamais have a get? How could you say that? How can you issue a get post passing? Well, we know for a fact the get lacham a person cannot issue a get after his passing. Now Rashi explains that the Gemara figure at this point. That we're going on the same case as the Eurasia. He gave her a get and said, This is your get, Meha Yom, starting from today. Imati, if I pass away. So, if I pass away during your lifetime, it's a get retroactively. And on that, we have this discussion. What is her status? Is she fully married? Is she a Suffolk? Which would indicate that both Rabbi Yudin and Rabbi Yassi do not hold of the Lema Freya concept over here. 
that eventually when he passes on, it's implemented retroactively. They're not going with that. Because they're treating her either like a fully married woman or like a suffix, so apparently not working with that. So when does the get implemented? Apparently upon his passing. Well, that's the question. How can you give a get when he passes away? How can you say the get is chal when he passes away? You can't give a get lachamis. Oh, so now we're going to switch tracks. I'm a rava. Ba'imer, we're not speaking about that case where he gave it mahayoyim lachamis. No, ba'imer me'ishani ba'ilam. We're speaking about a, a unique case. A brand new case. Not mahayoyim imati. In that case, the get is chal lemafreya. When he passes away, it's implemented retroactively. In which case, she's fully divorced. Retroactively. There's no discussion as per her status. Here we're speaking that he didn't say that. He said, Me'ishani Ba'ilam. Oh, my Rabba Ba'imer Me'ishani Ba'ilam. He gave her a get and he said, Look, this get will be a get the moment before I, before I pass away. The last moment of my existence, of my, of my life. So the question is, when is that moment? It says uh, Rabbi Yehuda, we apply the uh, Brera concept. We say, look, let's verify. If it turns out that he you know, passed away in two years from today, so until then she's fully married. Rabbi Yehuda doesn't hold a Brera here. He says, no. But every given moment, you know, that moment can be the moment before his passing. And therefore, it's a perpetual, continuous uncertainty which gives her a status of a suffocatious ish. Okay, so in short summary, we have the Amar Aleph, which discussed the idea of an oinus, which is uncommon, which we cannot account for. And then we have the Allah of a fellow who gave a get on condition. There we say they have to be careful, there shouldn't be any yichud. Unless there is Adam to prevent any interaction as married, we're concerned that that will nullify the get or the you know hovering get, the potential get. What happens if there is a yichud? We say but the evidence it's not concerning, but if there is more than that, then perhaps it is concerning. We have a machlekes, we had a we had a, a different mission regarding Shama Basilal and Rabbi Echen's explanation, and we try to endeavor to match up the two sugis according to uh, each one of the three interpretations of our Brisa. And we concluded with the Machlekes Rabbi Rabbi in a case where he issued a get, which will be implemented a moment before his passing. When is that moment? It's an unknown moment at this point. Rabbi Yisrael says, until then she's an Ishes Ish. Vada, Rabbi Yisrael considers her a perpetual Suffolk Ishes Ish. All the best to you, Psyrus Tavis, and Machat Slacha.